Hello, it's Cried here with a breakdown for shields in Armored Core 6. Shields can only be equipped on the left back slot of your AC, so you can only have one shield equipped. There's a total of 7 shields to choose from, but even then, these are not very popular, probably because most shields require timing and people rather go pew pew with other weapons. But that doesn't mean that shields are weak. They are quite powerful when utilized properly. Let's go over some basics of the shield and their properties first. When your shield is up, firing your left hand weapon including melee weapons will automatically cancel your shield. Right handed charge attacks or heavy weapons that enter firing stances will also cancel the shield even if you're using tetrapod or tank legs. However, you can still charge weapons without cancelling your shield on your left hand. So, running a shield that can cover you when your weapons are charging or on cooldown might be a combo you want to consider. The only exception to the interruption rule is the coral shield. You can both charge and fire weapons while the coral shield is up. Melee weapons still interrupt the shield though. Next, let's look at some stats. IG in the stat description stands for Initial Guard. These tell you how much damage and impact reduction you get in percentage terms, and how long the initial period lasts after deploying the shield. In this case, the VP61S Initial Guard lasts for 0.6 seconds, and builds up 190 heat when you cast it. Heat only builds up for shields when you cast it. Taking damage does not increase the heat buildup of your shield. However, do keep in mind that if you get staggered with your shield up, your shield immediately overheats. And since higher cooling means that the heat will reduce faster, looking at these two stats can tell you how often you can use your shield. A shield with a low initial heat buildup and high cooling can be spammed often. You can't assault boost while using shields, so when you activate a shield, it will interrupt your assault boost. Using a quick boost also temporarily stops the shield, and then reactivates it, so watch out for your heat buildup when you're doing this. Despite the coral shield animation looking like it doesn't deactivate and then reactivate, it still does deactivate during the quick boost. After the initial guard period, your shield's damage reduction and impact dampening will turn weaker with the exception of the VE61 PSA shield, which works a bit differently. This is to reward you for timing your initial guard well. And finally, other than the typical weight and energy load cost, the last stat shields share is the deployment range. This is the angle at which guarding with the shield would work. All shields except the coral shield have 180 degrees in range, which is honestly more than enough to cover almost all possible attacks, especially if you're in hard lock and won't really lose track of your enemy. Even when the attack hits a part of you that doesn't seem like there's a shield, as long as it is in the front half of the sphere, the shield effect will kick in. The coral shield covers your entire AC, so even if an enemy sneaks up on you, a missile swerves back from behind you, or you're in soft lock and lost track of the enemy, the coral shield will still protect you. It is also worth noting that weapons with the PA interference stat, the pulse weapons in particular, for their high PA interference, increases the amount of accumulated impact damage taken when you are using the shield. As you see here, the Aurora's PA interference isn't high, so you are still actually taking less impact damage with the VP61S shield than without. On the other hand, you can see clearly that the pulse guns do more impact with than without the shield. The PA interference of melee weapons is also fairly low. Compared to other weapons without PA interference, you're still doing relatively more damage, but I would only say that pulse weapons show the greatest effect in countering shields. Ever the exception to rules, the coral shield is not affected by PA interference, as it is a coral shield and not an energy shield. Finally, shields don't work with your pulse armor nor terminal armor extensions, 
so you can't layer your shield on top of these to make extensions even tankier. Let's take a look at the individual shields now, working from the top of the list to the bottom. The VP61PS has the highest cooling even though it's not by much. Combined with a fairly low deployment heat buildup means that it is a shield that is spammable and fairly forgiving. Its stats for both the initial guard and normal guard are decent, so it is a good all-round shield. The initial guard duration is long enough for you to not have to perfectly time your guards, but still short enough that you don't want to randomly click it, but instead use it on reaction. And the most impressive stat if we had to take a look at all four of the guard stats is its initial impact dampening. The SI24 SUQ5 has poor normal damage mitigation and impact mitigation. Even its initial damage mitigation and impact mitigation are poor, even though it is quite filled up on the stat sheet. In fact, it has the worst initial guard stats outside the VE61 PSA that works differently. What makes this shield shine is its extremely low deployment heat buildup and long initial guard duration. It is a very forgiving shield that you should aim to hold the shield up for roughly 1 second to get the full effect out of it. But be careful not to get staggered with this shield up because it has the worst cooling out of all the shields. The SI27 SUR8 has the lowest deployment heat buildup. Its normal damage mitigation is actually quite high, but its normal impact mitigation is mediocre. Why am I talking about the normal mitigation? Because its initial guards not only sucks, but also only has 0.2 seconds worth of duration. And it's not even the cheapest shield nor does it have a high cooling. Comparing it to the previous shield we covered, since they both have low deployment heat buildup anyway, here are the difference in stats. With roughly the same level of initial guard stats, the SUR8 only wins in cooling. The SUQ5's 1 second mitigation is very lenient already, so the SUR8 is a horrible shield when it comes to initial mitigation. You would just take the SUQ5. But the SUR8 is flexible in that it is fairly spammable and does better during longer holds when initial guard would have dropped off other shields too. The VP61PB has the best initial guard mitigation out of all the shields, but with a very tight window of 0.3 seconds and 480 heat buildup per deployment. Its normal guard is quite pathetic, so you better have confidence with your timing if you're running this shield. You are not going to be spamming this shield at all. But if you can properly time your blocks, you are pretty much cancelling out almost all the damage and impact in the brief 0.3 seconds. Thankfully, it is also a very cheap shield in terms of weight and energy load cost. The SI29 SUTTC has poor normal damage mitigation but good normal impact mitigation. Its initial guard stats are not bad, but the most outstanding aspect is definitely the long 1.6 seconds initial guard. It does, however, have the highest deployment heat buildup out of all the shields. I highly suggest running this shield with the mindset that you can't spam this shield, but when you do activate it, you should be holding it for the whole 1.6 seconds. This means that this shield is tailored to stopping a barrage of attacks that happen over a longer period of time, like the full unloading of multiple missiles or a heavy continuous barrage of lasers. Builds that you know will have a long downtime from weapon cooldowns or waiting for coral generators to resupply can benefit greatly from this shield as well. And thankfully, its cooling is high enough for it to be ready to use again when you need it next. The VE61 PSA is a shield that works quite differently from the other shields. The first clue is that its stat sheet reads idle time instead of initial guard. This idle mitigation and duration still work just like initial guard, except as you can see, it is super weak and lasts for 4 seconds. 
This is because it is a shield that becomes ready after 4 seconds to transition into the strongest normal guard and impact dampening. You can see the shield shine brighter as a visual indication when it is charged. So the key to this shield is to charge it up before battle and only let it down right before you are about to get staggered so that the shield doesn't overheat. To maximize the time you can do this, having a left-handed arm weapon that is used for punishing enemy staggers is a good idea. This means that you don't have to interrupt your shield as much or at all, so that the only time you're letting go of your shield is when you manage to stagger the enemy to punish with your left-handed weapon or when you're about to get staggered. Do remember that if you quick boost, your shield resets, so this is best used in a tanky build and not a quick one. If you are in battle, it is wise to start this shield up when you have lower stagger. Do keep in mind that this shield is one of the costliest shields though. Finally, the NGI-028 is the coral shield with a bunch of exceptions that I've talked about in the beginning, like being able to fire your left-handed weapon while the shield is up, 360 degree deployment range, and not getting affected by PA interference. For these reasons, and having a fairly decent initial guard and normal guard already makes the coral shield a very solid choice despite the downsides of requiring the highest energy load at 800, a high heat buildup of 450, with only a cooling of 100. If your build has plenty of spare energy load, this shield is definitely one to try. Like and subscribe. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me, Krite, signing out.